Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. We are back with some more nature journaling. And we're going to just look at butterflies today. I, I did honestly consider getting moths out, but then I was like, you know what? I kind of don't want to be distracted with comparisons today. The way, um, you know, we focused a lot on comparisons on Tuesday with our dragonflies. So let's just look like just at butterflies. And I really want to try that exercise, zoom in, zoom out. Um, in a really purposeful way with these specimens that I have picked out here. Now, I will I will let you know, I do have the microscope hooked up again, um, but I am not gonna get certain species out of here. I know, for example, the swallowtail. Um, this guy is a little bit um, sloppy on the abdomen. <laughs> so, so we're gonna leave that butterfly in the box and I'm not gonna pick it up and put it under the microscope, but we can pretty much do everybody else. <laughs> So that's pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, let's let's look at some butterflies. And uh, obviously we are live, so if y'all have any questions or if you want me to pick something up so you can see it a bit closer, just just let me know. Um, so I picked a bunch of butterflies out of uh, one of Jim Mason's butterfly collections that we have here at the Nature Center. We do, by the way, have a butterfly pocket guide that you can check out on our website for free. The PDF is up there. Um, but yeah, these I will let you know what they are. This one is a tiger swallowtail. This one has like the best name ever. It's one of the sulfurs and there's a lot of just like nondescript yellow sulfurs that exist out there and that you can see outside all, all summer long. But this one is called the dog face, the southern dog face because it has these little like dog shapes if you look at the yellow. Yeah, and I think that's hilarious. So that's why I picked that one. Um, this is the question mark which undoubtedly has the best butterfly name, period. Um, <laughs> not to be confused with comma. Oh, I'm so funny. Uh, no. Um, and and uh, honestly, I picked this one because it's pretty common. The question mark name is just freaking hilarious to me. <laughs> like, what is that butterfly? Mm, question mark? <laughs> no, literally, that's its name. Um, but also the wing shape is just super fun. This one is called a buckeye, and I love the little wing spots on it and those pretty silver streaks it's got. The tiny one is a spring azure, and I thought that'd be kind of fun to, to get some close-up looks with our microscope. And then this one is a red admiral, which I've already been seeing outside, like even at my apartment complex where I live. So they're they're out right now. In fact, you can see maybe um, some of these here fairly shortly. I haven't honestly gone out looking specifically for butterflies. I just quite like red admirals, and so I noticed when one of those flew by the other day. Um, yeah, so let's let's look at some of these butterflies. And you know, I I think because some of the wing shapes are pretty fun, that maybe that's what I will start with. Um, maybe just looking at sort of, um, you know, there's there's some nature journal exercises where you can make like a, a field guide almost to all these different butterflies. Um, so maybe that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll space them out on my journal page and just have, you know, the emphasis be on some of the wing shapes and some of the more like noticeable patterns that they have. I think that sounds good. And then maybe we can take a close up look at some of the features on some of those select butterflies to really zoom in and zoom out. So I'm gonna write my date down. I believe it's May 7th. For once I actually knew the date right away. Quarantine day question mark once again, because who knows at this point? I don't know how long I've been in quarantine. I've been in, uh, um, out working outside of the nature center, te well, most of the time, um, long enough that the rat babies that my rat had at the beginning of all this are now adults, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, so that's crazy. So let's, I'm going to get a butterfly out so we can look at it more closely. I'm going to start with our red admiral because I like these little guys. They're just real cool. So let's, let's look at this little red admiral and put her on our page. I wonder if I can zoom in a little bit on our screen here. Let me try that for you guys and see what happens. Whoop. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so maybe I can get it. Hello, focus on me, please. Maybe, we'll find out. Cool, so here's our red admiral. Um, and I don't know that there's really any secret to sketching these guys out, so um, you guys do whatever works for you. I'm gonna start with the body because that seems like a really obvious place to start. I'm noticing on this butterfly, and you know, maybe I should move the light a little bit closer so that it's 
easier for you guys to see on the camera. It's not plugged in today, so I can move it around. Um, let's see if I can fit it behind my camera here. How is that? Is that a little better? Probably not, but you know, we're gonna do our best today. That's all we ever can do. Um, yeah, I don't know, those shadows are kind of deeper now, but um, we'll deal with it. How about this? Is that better? Oh, that's, well, that's way better, certainly. Can you focus on my butterfly, please? There you go. So for those of you journaling at home, um, this would be a good screenshot to do um, so that you can see these features up close while you continue working or, or, you know, come back and pause the video here to get a good look at its features. Um, I like to start by picking out the things that I notice. So let's see, what are we noticing about this butterfly? I notice that it has kind of a snout. Come on, you can focus. I know you can. Do you see that snout? Maybe if it'll focus. Hello, can you please focus? Not likely. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. Um, it has a bit of a snout, which I think is kind of cool. Maybe if I do something a little different, that'd be better. What else are you guys noticing about this butterfly? Um, take a look at it or attempt to while I rearrange my screen here. Pardon me for technical mumbo jumbo. But yeah, what are we noticing about that butterfly? Actually, I can just set over my camera real quick. I really like its cute little uh, snout. I don't think it zooms in any further than that, so that's about as far as we can go. Um, what else? The chat is quiet today. I see we have some viewers. Um, it's okay. No pressure. No pressure to respond. Um, it's got quite long antennae. That's something I'm noticing. The forewings here go like way far up on the animal. Oh boy. How do I get this to not suck? And here I thought I had everything all figured out ahead of time. That's quite all right though. Um, <laughs> that did not help at all. That made everything worse. Well, that'll work for something. Um, oh dear. Sorry, guys. Okay. I mean, really like the shape of the wings on this little butterfly. Again, this is the Red Admiral. You can do it, camera. Focus on the butterfly. Really nice blurry shape. That's okay. Well, we got a good shot earlier. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, let's sketch this little fella out. And uh, I'm going to start by kind of mapping out where I think the tip of the wing should go. So if this is its body, I'm going to give her a little snout. Maybe let's have the wing going up here like this. And it does kind of go out quite far. I notice um, its body is very fuzzy, so I might try to get that into my sketch here. It's a very, very fuzzy body. That's fun. I'm going to label the snout on this little guy. Beep. Now there are butterflies that are legitimately like they have snout in the name. This is not that. Please don't at me 
Jim Mason. Um, but it's, it's still, I think, a feature, and I've definitely heard butterfly people refer to that feature as a snout. So that's what we're going to do today. And then I'm going to, I guess, like really, really lightly with my pen, I'm just using a regular like ballpoint pen, um, sketch in the, the general shape of the wing. But there is like this really distinct curve going on, which honestly wasn't that noticeable until I was having to draw it out. So we will go ahead and do that. Cool. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom wing. Let's see, how far out does it go? Maybe like right there because it comes out quite far from the abdomen. Boop. And then let's see, there's a little bit of a space in between that fore wing, the front wing. But otherwise, yeah, there we go. There's that butterfly wing. And even though I just spent all that time messing around with the light, I'm going to go ahead and move it back to where it was originally because I think that lighting looks way better. Um, so there's our Red Admiral's general shape. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mirror the same thing on the other side, and then I'm going to put the antennae in because I think those antennae that are like quite long and like, you know, you can see they're kind of bulbous on the front. Um, that seems like an important feature. So we will go ahead and add that in on this little fella too. I say fella, I, I don't know the sex of this butterfly. Um, some of them have different, what's, what's the word, like patterns or that, but I'm not a butterfly expert. Most of what I learned from butterflies has been from Alicia Oberg, Jim Mason, and uh, Nicole Brown. <laughs> so there we go. Okay. Um, and then mirror this little back wing. I like to kind of play connect the dots with new shapes because that way I'm not just like blindly making a shape. I'm just kind of like, okay, let's put a spot where it's supposed to go, put a spot where it's supposed to end up, and then I can connect the dots and it makes a more accurate shape. And that's really, I think, a useful trick too if you're not like somebody who considers yourself an artist because that can really help you figure out where the shapes are supposed to go um, in, in a different way. It gets you out of that mindset of like I'm drawing and into the mindset of like, okay, where does this shape need to go? And then you just connect the dots with lines and that's, that's pretty simple and straightforward. Cool, there's a few little like lines on this. Okay, so that's our Red Admiral. I'm gonna write in her name, his name, whatever this is. Oh my gosh, I need to stop talking while I write words down because I can't spell at the same time apparently while I'm thinking about other words. That happens to me a lot when I'm writing too. Like I'll be having a conversation with somebody and I'll look down at what I've written on a computer, I've, what I've typed, and it'll say like socks or something completely irrelevant to the sentence I'm typing. Okay, so I think I also want to put these um, patterns in because it's, uh, you know, not quite as complex as some of these other butterflies like this question mark over here that has so many spots and stuff. This seems really distinct. Like it's just red stripes that are that are pretty like distinct <laughs> for lack of a better word. So let's do that. Um, I'm not going to try and make it accurate. I just want to get the general idea of it. Like, okay, there's some orange down here. And I'm not planning on coloring any of these things in with colored pencils or anything today. So I'm just going to write down what the colors are. Orange. Um, and keep in mind, you know, looking at these specimens, that the, the colors may not be quite as bright as they were when we first looked at them when they were live. So you might see them in a photograph or, a, or just outdoors, and they might look a little bit different. And that that just may be the case. So make sure that anytime you're looking at these like dead specimens with me that are preserved, um, you take that into consideration. And I would really recommend that you go, well, that didn't turn out very symmetrical, but that's okay. I'd really recommend that you go um, look up photographs of these guys while they're alive to help get a better idea of uh, what it is that they, they should look like when you see them. Cool, and then they've just got some fun little spots here. And otherwise the rest of this butterfly is just like, dark so I'm gonna go ahead and just make the rest of this little guy dark it's almost a dark brown in person but in in real life I feel like they're more of a, a black color like they're pretty contrasted they're very vibrant little guys nice so that's our red admiral we're gonna make sure we look for these guys and I say we because um, I am gonna do this and you are gonna do this too but look for these guys uh, when you're going outside 
you're going on a grocery run or something else or getting your uh, daily exercise in, yeah, look for red admirals because they're, they're out there right now and they're really fun splashes of color to see this time of year as things begin to become more colorful again. Cool, so that's our Red Admiral Butterfly. I want to do somebody else next. Poor little fella back. Um, let's see, who should we do next? Let's let's get this cute little Buckeye, because I think he's kind of cute. Boop. So that's a fun Buckeye. I'm gonna leave some space in between so that we can zoom in on some of these features later on. And I guess since I have the actual butterfly here on my page, I'm gonna attempt to make them kind of um, like to scale, I guess, like life-sized or whatever. But let me see if I can get this to focus. Wish me luck, everybody. Gotta move this for hips, it'll care. Nope, it's not gonna focus. But this is the Buckeye. Ah, there it goes. And they're really, really pretty. I love the little silver stripe they've got on their wings right by that one eye spot. But you'll notice it has quite a few eye spots. Ooh, dear. I wish I could just get this camera to focus. <clears throat> and okay, you notice on this back wing right here, how there's like a little like chunk taken out. That's maybe not something that happened while the butterfly was alive you know maybe it happened when it was preserved and it just got kind of jostled around a little bit but i think that's showing off some of the like benefits to having these eye spots so it it gives birds which are butterflies primary predators something to focus on that's away from the the animal's actual body so if birds try to eat that little eye spot, then the butterfly itself is not really injured. It just might affect its ability to fly a little bit, but really it doesn't harm the butterfly as much. So it's like putting a little target on an, a less important part of your wing. And that, you know, if it was a live butterfly, could have been from a bird strike. I think that's something that... Um, People don't realize often about butterflies and one of the reasons why they're so brightly colored is because they are trying to communicate with birds via their color so some mammals for example are primarily trying to communicate with other mammals via their color and so that's why skunks are black and white it's the contrast mammals can't really see very many colors but with birds they see every color and more so um, it's a great way to communicate with a bird to be bright orange and say, hey, listen, I am poisonous, do not eat me, um, because birds see that bright orange and they see that as a warning and so they're likely to leave that animal alone. Cool, I'm gonna start with its body again, boop, boop, and I'm gonna try to do this kind of to scale. I'll make a note of that on my page if this turns out to work. I'll probably have to do this swallowtail first then so that we <laughs> take up enough space of the page. Um, but let me see. What are we noticing? I, I noticed that it doesn't quite have as much of a snout as the last one, but there's like a little bit of a snout going on. You feel me? A little, little tiny snout, but not really. Um, and let's see, these, these four wings really uh, go kind of straight out in the middle here. And then I'm gonna find the tip and the top of the wing right there. Is that to scale? Probably and then just kind of curve up to it. Nice, easy, boom. And then it kind of comes down like this. Whoop. And there's our Buckeye wing, one of them anyway. And same thing on either side, gonna find the little tip, gonna find the bottom tip, and then it kind of goes out like this, beautiful, and then I'll just make a little curve that connects it. Is it symmetrical? No, but it's fine. I'm not mad. Pencil in some of the antennae, and there we go. Um, now I'm just going to fill in the back part of the wing, and the back part of the wing comes out quite far. And again, like I've said this like every single time we've done this, but I, I really like using a, just a regular pen when I'm journaling stuff like this, because um, knowing that I can't just like draw a bad wing, erase it, 
draw a bad wing again like it really makes me focus on what I'm putting down on the page and that's I think I guess why I'm I'm uh, kind of doing this connect the dots sort of method <laughs> to filling in the shapes um, just because like yeah I only have one shot so I better make it as accurate as possible and you know then you're wasting less time on trying to be like a perfect artist and spending more time making accurate observations on this little fella and since this one has like a little bit of a broken wing I guess I'm gonna add that in there just for fun and make those notes we were talking about with the birds on this specimen on our drawing cool so that's our buckeye and I'm gonna put her name down buck I Boop. love them they're very fun I love them and um, the eye spots seem like the most important feature on these guys so I am gonna make sure I get the eye spots and that silver stripe on the top because there's plenty of butterflies that have eye spots um, but not all of them have that pretty silver streak I think there is a butterfly that's just called a silver streak interestingly And then this little spot here. And these are really fun. Like they do look like eyes now that I'm seeing them up close. Like they've got a little shine spot in the middle and then they've got like a dark spot. So these are these are very eye-like eye spots, <laughs> which seems like a kind of silly thing to say, but like, honestly. Cool. And I'm just gonna label the eye spot. As I'm doing this, I'm kind of picking out features on the butterfly that I think are pretty cool that I want to look up, uh, look at more closely later on. And one of those features is uh, these eye spots. And I also, like, while I was drawing the antenna, I was like, hey, the tip of the antenna on this guy looks pretty different from the red admiral that we had up a minute ago. So I kind of want to look at those under the microscope too and just see how different those are. And back wing eye spots are a little bit different, which is kind of cool. Huh. I wonder why. Maybe it's just because the coloration is a little bit different back there. Just add some little stripes in the back is what I'm going to do. And there's a couple little orange spots. I don't know if those are important, but I'm going to add them in there. And then most importantly, I think, because it's really standing out to me, is this big old silver streak. So I'm gonna write that in there and um, make sure I label that so that I can understand when I come back in the future and look at this page that that's an important feature and that it's a different color from everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly kind of scribble in some darker shapes just to indicate that, you know, that one spot is really, really light. And if you guys, of course, are, are coloring in your journal pages, take advantage of those colors. And uh, yeah, there we go. There's our buckeye. So I'm gonna write this like, it's more of an off-white streak. I know I kept saying silver, but I mean, really, it's, it's just kind of off-white, so. Cool. And then this little tear in the wing, um, I'm gonna write bird strike. Cause I like to ask questions in my journal when I'm filling in things. <laughs> Eye spots really are some of the coolest things in nature. You're not wrong, Anna. Okay, so there's our little buckeye. Now let's let's go ahead and get our tiger swallowtail. And I, I said I wasn't gonna get him out, but I might very, very gently try um, this poor little guy's abdomen is just kind of falling apart a little bit. Let me put it on the edge of this block so that its abdomen isn't like touching anything. It's it's dangling quite a bit. So I apologize to whoever's collection item this is. Um, hopefully this doesn't fall apart on us. But this is an eastern tiger swallowtail called so because of those beautiful tiger stripes on the wing. Make sure it's a little bit more secure there and I'm not gonna mess with it anymore after this. Boom, done, okay. Um, and just a beautiful striking butterfly that you are very, very, very likely to notice when you're outside because it's just so big and showy. 
Um, so let's, let's put this little fella down here. Make sure I give enough space for it. And I'm going to try and keep with the theme of like um, being to scale with these guys. And I'm not going to try and hold this up to the camera. I'm sorry, um, just because it's, it's a fragile specimen and I don't want to disturb it more than I have to. Um, so we'll just have to look at it from the angle that you guys are already looking at it. But fortunately, it's a larger butterfly, so that's not going to be, you know, quite as terrible um, as, as it might have been for one of the other butterflies that we've looked at. So there's our little fella. Um, where does its wings go? Its wings go quite a bit out, maybe up to here. We're going to say that's right. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Maybe that's where the tip of this butterfly goes. And notice like it really, really curves out to that point. Like it goes kind of up and out. So I'm going to try and do that with my line, my little connect the dots line. Nice. Bottom shape, unlike the others that were really straight across, do you notice how this one kind of goes down a little bit? So I'm going to make sure I communicate that in my sketch. It doesn't go straight down on the side, it, it angles and it goes down this way too. So right there maybe. And then we'll curve like that. There's our swallowtail wing shape. Fun. The back wings, the hind wings are gonna be really fun, but we'll, we'll finish these wings first. Nice. Okay, now tackling these back wings, let me scoot this up a little bit. Um, I guess what I'm gonna do is look at the wing without the little tail and then just add the, the tail on as an afterthought. So here's the kind of droopy abdomen. Um, this wing really kind of goes out straight down like this, maybe even further, but no, maybe a little bit further. And it kind of comes out like this. And again, I'm just kind of making like little dots to connect later on when I'm ready, if I'm satisfied with the shape. That seems about right. So this curves in a really fun way. And I'm not going to try and do the little like divots at the moment. I'm just going to kind of get the general shape in and then we can maybe go back and try to add that detail in if we want to. But it's up to you. Um, I think that the general shape is much more important than those little like scalloped edges and stuff. This doesn't seem like, I mean, you get the idea. You're not looking at the little, when you see this thing fly around, you're not looking at those little tiny scalloped edges. You're like, whoa, a yellow butterfly <laughs> with little tails. So um, I'm just going to keep that in mind. Now I will say that this little tail is pretty distinct, Ooh, fun little shape. And it's got like a little like a pre pre tail almost you know what I mean like it kind of like makes a little tiny tail in the front and then whoop, the big old tail that goes like this cool okay that's fun and I'm wondering if maybe these I it looks like I maybe made these back wings too large but I think it's only because this edge is so black that it makes it look like it's a bit smaller. So I think that this is going to be fine because we were pretty accurate with our like fill in the dots sort of method that we did. And now the antennae, which are really triangular. They, they have kind of a fun shape, don't they? The antennae tip is like right here. And I'm going to put the tip in first because it kind of goes out like this, doesn't it? And has a cute little tip. Fun. You know what I'm also noticing is that even the body has some yellow stripes. Like, I don't know if you guys can quite see it. I might pull it up just a little bit, even though I said I wasn't going to. Um, but do you see uh, those little yellow stripes on the body on the side? Yeah, pretty neat. Okay. So I'll try to put that on there, but it's not going to be that easy. Okay, now what are the most important features on this butterfly? Obviously, the black marks are really important, so I'm going to go ahead and make, make those little black marks pretty obvious. Um, the edges of the wings are black. Four wings. 
trying to be super accurate again. And then they have these stripes, which, okay, big old stripe right here, slightly smaller stripe here, even smaller stripe there. And uh, we'll just repeat that on the other side. Um, now those seem like the most important things to me. That's definitely what I notice when I first look at it. The other thing is maybe this other little stripe that kind of follows down, but I'm not going to try and draw every single little thing um, because we're not going to notice those features necessarily when we're looking at them. And, and I guess for my journal entry, I really just want to focus on the things that I'm going to notice about this butterfly if I see it outside. Your journal entry might be different though, and if your journal entry you want to focus on like every single little detailed shape and like really really get like a, an accurate picture of this butterfly, please do that. Feel free, it's your journal and you're doing your journal entry for yourself, so it doesn't matter what anybody else is going to think about it when they see it, it's just for you to, to learn and get to know these animals. Um, I will add these little spots in though because I feel like I would notice that a little bit if I saw it fly by, maybe a little bit. And then I'll just kind of fill this in so that we know it's black. Same thing with the, the edges of the wing, although this is like a pretty distinct butterfly again. Um, the other swallowtails we have are um, either all black or have, have very different uh, patterns. So. I think we've gotten the most important things down, which is the, the yellow and black. And I'm gonna make sure I make a note that this is yellow since we cannot see that. And maybe that there's some little spots down the edge. Notice I did not count those. I did not try to be super accurate. I just tried to get the general idea down with my little pen here. Cool. And let's color this guy in. Wait, Rachel, maybe be consistent with how you color it in. <laughs> and then I'm gonna write the name down, which again, this is an Eastern tiger swallowtail. So we'll just write down like a tiger swallowtail. So fun story, back when I was like a teenager um, and I was like first really, really, really getting into wildlife and uh, birding and stuff like that, I remember being at a restaurant and seeing a swallow, like a barn swallow out the window and just like losing my mind over it because I, it was so cool and I hadn't really ever noticed them before that um, and known what they were and I was like, it's a, it's a barn. Sw swallow and all I could think was swallowtail butterflies because it had like the barn swallows have that tail like these guys do and so and so I, I just kept saying like, it's, a, it's a barn s swallowtail and and people were very confused because I could not articulate just the word swallow because I had just learned about swallowtail butterflies and that was the only thing in my head so every time I see a swallowtail butterfly I think now that is an actual swallowtail unlike a swallow which has a swallowtail because it's a swallow, but it's not a swallowtail, it's just a swallow. <laughs> anyway, that's your confusing Rachel anecdote for the day. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna gently, gently put this guy back. Goodbye. Um, one thing I will point out before I do though, because we're not gonna pull this guy out of the microscope, is look how fuzzy this butterfly is. Like seriously, there's so much fuzz on its wing. Dang it, we can't see it. Okay, maybe while I have it out there, we'll just go ahead and quickly put it under the microscope. I'm just breaking all my rules today. It's fine. Let's see under the microscope. Totally unsuccessful. Yeah, butterflies are worse than birds, honestly. Um, <laughs> in terms of at least finding them, like, geez. Uh, although, I will say, if you are a bird person and you already have a microscope, not a microscope, sorry, binoculars, um, Definitely use your binoculars when you're looking at butterflies. That's like the best pro tip I can give to you. Um, professional butterfly people uh, use binoculars to get close-up looks at butterflies because 
you're you're not going to get close enough to look at it from like a distance you you've got to look at it or sorry you're not going to get close enough to look at it like real close you got to you got to do it from a distance okay but seriously look how many hairs there are on that wing that's really stinking cool so since i'm about to put this butterfly away for good what i want to do is maybe like grab like a circle on this butterfly maybe i'll do it with a my thicker pin i know you guys can't see what i'm doing because i've got the microscope in the way but i really really want to zoom in on that edge of the wing so i'll show you guys what i'm doing um so yeah, I'm just going to kind of draw off to the side here just how fuzzy this is. And I'll try to draw that like the same way. So here's my little zoom in. And I've got my arrow pointing to it. Just do a little fun arrow like that. <clears throat> And that's the edge of the wing. And then let's like sketch in some of those details. So that is very, very cool. Um, here's the border of this wing. I love this activity so much, zoom in, zoom out, because um, you just really get a chance to look up close at at some of these things in a way that's that's really really fun um, so there's the black edge of the wing I'm gonna color in the abdomen too so that we can kind of make sense of these shapes as we're sketching in some of the details and yeah I just really want to show how hairy this is so I'm gonna draw in all these little hairs and make sure I label them so I know that it's not just me shading it in like those are just hairs and you'll notice um, there's hairs on the surface too, it's kind of hard to see, but you see those little shadows? Those are like little yellow hairs on the surface of that edge too. So let's, let's uh, make sure we get those other hairs in too. And label them. Hairy. And uh, I'll draw another arrow to this surface too. That was fun. Gosh, now I want to go back to my other butterflies, but I want to make sure I leave room on our page for the other species that I've got picked out. So at this point, let's say goodbye to the swallowtail. Bye-bye, friend. Um, and get my microscope out of here. Boop. So we'll, we'll gently put her back, and I really hope that her abdomen or his abdomen doesn't break. Oh, okay. Um, we lost a couple of legs, though, which is very sad. Sorry, little guy. Okay. Um, it would definitely be more important if it were, like, a scientific collection. Fortunately, it's as an education collection. It, it's not as big of a deal, but we still like to have good, you know, quality, put-together specimens. So, yeah. Um, let's, let's sketch in our other butterflies, and then let's pick out some features that we want to zoom in on, and I'll let you guys help me pick that out. Um... The other two, three, I guess, that we haven't done yet are this little tiny ring azure, which we can fit in pretty much anywhere, so I'm not too concerned about that. The question mark, which I love, it's so fun, and then this like cute little sulfur. So let's just sketch in this sulfur real quick, because the wing is not like a comp complex blah, 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 wing. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so let's get that little guy in here. Let's let's put let's put him up here. Um, there we go. <laughs> I just love these butterflies. They're so fun. Um, they just, it's, it's a dog face. It, that's what its name is. And that's what it looks like. Like these, this is the fun named part of our, <laughs> of our butterfly experience today. So let's see. Ooh, you know what I'm noticing? And I'm not trying to hold this guy up like we've attempted to do before. Um, I'm noticing that the body sits really far back. Let's see. Can I get it to not Pay attention to the other butterflies. Pay attention to this butterfly, camera. Please. You know what? I bet if I got a sheet of paper or something, that would work really well. Let's see. What's that sheet of paper? Oh, right. Oh, no. This has a bunch of words on it. Okay. Let's try this. <laughs> I'm determined to get 
at you guys a good look at this cute butterfly. Okay. How about this? How about this? How about this? Focus on the plate. Aha. Nice. That did the trick. Okay. Check out this cute little bird. Dog face. And uh, its wings are really far away. Like, its its body is tucked back in there, you know what I mean? Like, some of the other ones we had, like oh, this little dude right here, um, the snout stuck out quite a bit, the head stuck out quite a bit, but not on this little sulfur. So, let's try him. I don't think that actually worked as well as I thought it did, but I did my best, you guys. That's That's all I can do. Um, so let's draw our little body. Boop, boop. And this guy's got a pretty skinny abdomen. I know it's flattened because it's dried out. Ooh, it's got hairs on it too. Um, but, oh, that worked. See, was that so hard, camera? For one second, it was in focus. For exactly one second. Y'all, I'm doing my best. Thank you, Anna. I'm trying. Um, but it does have a lot of cute hairs. Thanks for nothing, you stupid camera. <laughs> um, me attempting to make How to Train Your Dragon references on a live stream for the Nature Center. Yep, that's right. Okay. Now, how am I going to tackle this? Urgh. There's its wings, edges. Boop, 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 boop. And these go way the heck out, so maybe up to here ish? That'll work. And this bottom wing, ooh, it actually kind of goes out at first and then curves up a little bit and ends right here. Now, okay, unlike the tiger swallow tail, which really curved inward, this guy, the wing goes almost straight down to that bottom point. So it's really not too far in compared to the top. So let's go ahead and whoop, connect that dot, whoop, connect that to the body, and then do our really big curve. Oh dear, that was not a good one. That's fine. Nice, and same thing on the other side. How far out does this go? Maybe to here? I'm glad I've like hacked a trick for myself for drawing butterfly wings, because this makes it so much easier. Okay, yeah, so we'll connect that. Connect this to the body. Oh, that's, that'll work, okay. And then ooh, really round curve where the head is just kind of tucked in there, but really the wings come way the heck over. That's fun. Okay, and then the antennae, I mean, one's only, only one is sticking out. The other one's kind of like bent in a weird way, but we'll do our best to represent that. And then these back wings, these hind wings are even larger than the fore wings, aren't they? So let's make sure we get that on there. Um, down here it does come out just a little bit but these are very round wings aren't they um and this comes out here and then it connects to this little fella up here and then we'll just connect the dots <laughs> that didn't turn out quite as round as it should have probably because i was connecting dots but that's okay I think part of the problem is I'm looking at this butterfly from a slight angle, and so that's affecting the way that I'm seeing it, but, you know, it's good enough. Since I don't feel like I got the roundness of the wings in my drawing, I'm going to just go ahead and make a note that these are very round. Because, you know, sometimes you don't get the shapes in that you want to get in. And that's why journaling includes a lot of labels to help you interpret your own drawings, um, however good or bad they may be. Cool. Okay. So now we get to draw a dog face. I'm so excited. Um, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little edge on here, and it's kind of scallopy, so we'll just do that real quick. Weep, 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 weep. And color that in. And the rest is just yellow, so we are going to make a note of that. This is yellow. And 
second show is this. Beautiful. Okay. Um, dog face. Let's do the dog face. It's so cute. Um, I'm going to start, I guess, let's, let's see. The dog nose kind of comes out to here and then goes down like this. Whoop. It's just so cute. I, I can't get over it. It's like a little cartoon. It's like that little cartoon dog in the this is fine meme where the house is burning around him. Yeah, that's exactly what this looks like. He needs a little hat and then that's it. So actually, that's a really good journaling prompt because you always want to ask yourself what it reminds you of so that you can remember a little bit better. So um, this is fine dog is going in my notes. Okay, give him an eyeball. And then he's got like this little doggo ear going on. And then the rest of this is just dark. Butterflies are so weird. <laughs> like I'm sure to this butterfly, it's it's uh, some kind of defense mechanism similar to an eye spot, but then us humans get in here and we're like, oh, it's a dog, <laughs> and uh, and that's how we like interpret this butterfly's defense mechanism. <laughs> like, oh, you're so cute. Like, yeah, it's just just a defense, but okay. <laughs> Okay, that's a terrible dog face. I'm not saying that this butterfly has an accurate dog face on its wing. That's just how we named it, so, you know. Same thing on the other side. Draw a cute dog face, and then we're gonna move on to our last two butterflies, and then maybe look at some stuff up close. And uh, call it call it good. I know we're obviously, as usual, going longer than an hour, but I'm I'm sure that we can all agree that that's fine. Using my pen to color in the black part of a butterfly wing. Boom! Beautiful. That'll work. And obviously we need to put its name in. So this is uh, just a dog face. That's its name. It's the dog face. I think it's called a, excuse me, a Southern dog face. At least that's how it was labeled, but that name may have changed in recent years because common names do that a lot with animals, but there we go. Okay, now let's do our question mark which is fun. I'm not going to try and even draw the pattern on this guy because forget that it's very complex, but the shape of the wing that, that we can do. And th I believe this guy is named for, yes, the mark on the bottom of the wing. Oh dear. We're going to need to call upon our, um, KDWPT sign I have over here again. Hello, behold this beautiful sign. Okay. Do you see that? This is a question mark because of the question mark spot on the bottom of the wing. See how it's metallic? Now that spot, let's see, you can do it camera, just, just focus, focus, focus just a little bit. Um, it's difficult to see. You can definitely see how metallic it is but I don't know that we're able to really fully appreciate um, the, sh the shape. It is a little like, um, there's a dot at the bottom of the curved line. There it is. Just for a moment. There you go, see that dot at the bottom of the curved line? There is a very, very similar species known as the comma that does not have the additional dot. It's just the curve, the little half circle. Um, and so that's how you tell those species apart is by whether or not they have the dot. And I know it's probably concerning thinking like, oh, I've got to look at the underside of a butterfly's wing to identify it. I mean, there's other ways to, to do that, but um, these guys do rest with their wings folded together, 
which means when you see this butterfly sitting down, it's going to be like from the side with its wings folded up so you can see the bottom, which is a good thing. So we're obviously going to have to zoom in on that little question mark, mark on our question mark. Wow, words. <laughs> but for now, we'll just do the shape because that's it's got this like, fun tattered edge sort of feel, which is pretty characteristic of the, the question mark butterfly. So let's go ahead and draw her little head which does stick out like most of our other butterflies did until this dog face, Silver. Um, and then, you know what? Its abdomen is shorter than its thorax, which has not been the case on literally any of our butterflies so far. So that is interesting. And in fact, it's so interesting to me that I'm going to make a note of that. Remind me. Uh, I haven't finished my butterfly yet, so I don't know how I'm going to do that. But remind me. Make sure that I do that. Okay. Um, now, these antennae really come from the middle part of the wing. These go all the way up here. Whoop. Whoop. Fun. And let's see. We want this to come out, like to here-ish. All right. And this this might be a little tricky. So what I'm going to do, kind of like I did um, with one of our other, like uh, the Admiral first, I'm going to put in the basic shape and then I'll make the edge match it. But that way we've got like the basic shape of the wing down to work with. Okay, that's fine with me. Um, and then I'll do the same thing over here. And it really does curve a lot, doesn't it? I didn't quite get that on this one, but that's okay. Like to the point where the the apex, the apex, the, the tip of the wing is almost lower than the highest point. Okay, cool. And then that comes down to about here. Slightly sketching that shape in. Oh, that'll do. Um, it's not symmetrical, but that's okay. So there's that. There's the tip that sticks out quite a bit, and then it folds in up here. So I've sketched in my little dots. Now I'm just going to attempt to fill in the blank there. And this time I will go ahead and make the shape kind of like it is on the butterfly. in up here and then goes down to this little tail okay um bear with me i'm gonna try to make this shape a little bit more like obvious that we've got like a little tail coming off the butterfly cool and then i'm gonna try to make this this shape up here a little bit more accurate too so there's a tip that sticks out right there so we're gonna try and go down to that tip and then zoom out like this Fun. I love these butterflies just have such a fun shape to their wing. Cool. And then it's just got like some spots. So I'm just going to kind of scribble some spots in in a nondescript way. Gosh, there's geese outside just fighting. I don't know if you can hear that on the recording, um, but like it's really funny. Okay, I'm I'm happy. That looks that looks pretty good. Um, we're gonna put question mark as its name, and I need to write that the abdomen is shorter than a thorax because that's pretty awesome. And of course, you know, this journal entry is for you. So if you don't know the terms for these things, just use terms that make sense to you so that you can figure out what's going on. Um, like it's little butterfly butt is shorter than its body. That's totally fine. That's what you're noticing. And that's an accurate way to describe it. 
um, oh dear, I'm noticing some inconsistencies, but that's okay. And I'm just going to write down that these are spotted um, slash marked wings, because uh, I'm not going to try and draw all the spots. I don't think it really matters that much, but just noting that they are spotted and orange-brown in color generally. Cool. Let's do some zooming in. I know I've skipped the spring azure, but we can mark that little butterfly in in a moment. I do want to see if it's possible for us to look at the question mark of this question mark butterfly <gasps> under the microscope. Oh dear, if I can be very, very careful with this specimen, I'm making myself nervous. Um, let me get my microscope pulled up on our screen. One moment. Oh boy. Oh, fun. Okay, okay, okay. This might work. I have to hold the butterfly. So hopefully my hand doesn't move so much that it makes y'all seasick. But look at that little question mark. You know what? It's, um, I don't know if any of you guys are band nerds or choir nerds, but it reminds me of a fermata, like the mark you put over music to make it um, hold for an indefinite amount of time. So I am going to put on the on my journal entry over here, like just to the side. I'm gonna zoom in and try to draw this little metallic shape. Which is this beautiful silver. Gosh, that's fun. And I'm gonna label it as the question mark. and make a note that's on the bottom of the wing. And I might I might go ahead and indicate on my sketch down here, oops, sorry, I'm moving my hand out of the screen, um, where this would be located. So like maybe I'll put like a little dotted line on here to indicate that this is like gonna be on the bottom. And then I'll go ahead and make it extra clear by putting top view on the top of my butterfly and just indicate like, okay, on the bottom of the wing, that's where that little shape would be. Very cool. Oh, you guys, this is fun. Um, that'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, put our little question mark back. And I, I want to get this little spring azure in here real quick. But in the meantime, I know that a lot of you have had to um, check out and that's totally fine. But if there's anybody left um, who is journaling along um, during the live portion of the video, if there is a certain feature you want me to look at up close, please let me know so that we can look at it. Otherwise, I'll just pick out some things and then those of you who are looking at this in the future um, can, can just have the chance to look at some of the features even if you couldn't choose which ones we look at. Let me attempt to get this one to focus. And we got about two seconds of a focused butterfly. Of course. Well, that's not going to happen. Oh, well, we're doing our best. Um, we'll look at this little guy under the microscope, perhaps. So let's, let's just do a quick little sketch of this tiny little spring azure who was collected in 95. Oh. These are one of those tiny little butterflies that you see in the grass all the time in the summer. And they've got a really basic shape, so this is a really easy little butterfly to draw. And this would be maybe a really fun one to, to look at under the microscope because it's just so tiny. There might be a lot of shapes we can zoom in on and features we can zoom in on that we really can't see from the naked eye. Cool, so there's a little spring azure butterfly. Obviously, we've got to write our name in. And I will make a note up here on my um, journal title that I'm drawing these to scale. Cool, and now let's go to our microscope and see some of these features up close on our little butterfly. Okay, okay, okay. Calm down. Um, <laughs> fun. Oh, this is 
is going to be great. All right, so let's focus. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look how pretty this butterfly is. Um, I'm going to change the brightness on this. What are some things you guys are noticing about this butterfly? Think about that as you're watching this video and um, start jotting them down in your, in your journal. Turn up the brightness. There we go. That's nice. I'll turn up the contrast just a little bit so that we're not getting totally washed out. And maybe I can make the brightness a bit, no, that's as bright as it goes. Okay. Oh, look, it's got like a cute little white line around its eye. Do you guys see that? What a cute butterfly. How fun is that? Okay. And looking at the edge here, there's just like the faintest little bit of pattern on those wings, but it's very, very light. So what do I want to zoom in on? I really like that it's got that cute little white eye. Let's go a little bit closer and see if we can get an even better look at that. Oh, the pin's in the way. Let's turn the butterfly. Oh, look at its face. It's so cute. You know what I'm noticing is that its body is like a really fuzzy sort of um, pale blue color. I don't know if that's really coming across in this microscope image, but it's kind of cute. Okay, well, I'm definitely zooming in on that because I love that. Um, its little antennae and its little face, which is certainly something we cannot see from the... Um, butterfly just looking at it up close in person even so let's let's zoom in on her little face um i think i'm gonna do that maybe in the space below it sure why not because we already zoomed on the question mark down below so let's see i'm gonna use my bigger pin and just like make a little box that we can fit this close-up drawing in and I like doing that, so we're gonna we're gonna do that on this actual butterfly too, and then do like a big old dotted line going down to it. Boop. Done. Cool. So let's look at this little fella and fill in our tiny sketch in that little corner. Um, I'm going to draw its little face, which is very cute. Wait, actually, maybe I want to get the antenna in there, too. Maybe I'll do that down here, then. Fuzz, 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 fuzz. Butterfly eyes are kind of fun. Like, look at that shape. Insect eyes, in general, are just very strange, aren't they? Um, strange in the sense that they are very different from us and our mammal cousins they're just different they're just very different cool let's make her little um white line and what on earth is happening with those mouth parts i i don't know i don't get it but are we gonna try and journal it you bet cool so i'm gonna and you know since since i there, there may be a specific term for this, and maybe it's not even a butterfly term, maybe it doesn't even matter, but when you're birding and you see a little um, line like that around the eye, we call it an eye line or an eye ring. I said eye line, eye ring. So I'm going to write that down as if I'm a bird person. White eye ring. That's so cute. And I kind of like that we're focusing on these little details that you really, you really can't see and like don't really matter to identify the butterfly because we spent so much time um, on the initial sketch, sketches of these guys looking at those more big picture things. So specifically having looked at the things that are more obvious, I feel like that gives us a nice excuse to really get in on some like unimportant nitty gritty details. And 
I don't mean to say that they're not important. I just mean not important in terms of like identifying it. Like now we're really doing some exploration about things that don't have to do with what species is this questions, which honestly get kind of tiring after a while. I know from a bird person, I know our fungus people, Lindsay, we only have one fungus person, it's Lindsay. Um, you know, just focusing so much on like, can you identify this species and not what is this really cool mouth parts function and the sh why is the shape this way and, and those like more big picture sort of physiological questions. I mean, that's more exciting than what, what's the ID? At least for me it is. That's just more we can learn besides just, you know, figuring out what it is and how to label it. Cute. Okay, I'm pretty happy. We got a cute little butterfly face. And I quite like that. What else do we want to do? Maybe maybe let's do the, the tip of the antennae. Um, I think that that is important. It would be helpful if I had the correct screen up so I could actually see what I'm showing you guys. Why? Oh, it froze, I think. I think our uh, microscope froze. Or my broadcaster froze. That could be it. No, it caught up. Okay, sorry guys. Yeah, let's, let's look up close this little antennae knob and see what that looks like. And then maybe let's look at one other butterfly. Actually, let's just look at another butterfly right now because we're, we're uh, going kind of long here. Um, if you guys have thought of anything you would like me to look at up close on one of these butterflies, let me know. Otherwise, we're just going to um, pick out some features that I find on them. Let's see. Um, I'll show you guys the butterflies that we have. I wonder if any of these have a really clearly different knob going on on the butterflies. No, they all they all kind of look the same. They just have different shapes, don't they? Let's look at this buckeye because he looks kind of cute. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust my microscope. Make sure that you guys can actually see it. There it is. Oh, well, okay, this is fun. He's a very hairy little butterfly too, just like that swallowtail was. Um, and I, I mean that on, on the surface of the wings too, not just the body, like, okay, oops, I got a little pin stuck on my microscope, but let's see if we can focus on this. See, oh, maybe that is just the body hairs. No, but look on the wing too. Okay, there's some goose honking. There's very, very fine hairs on the edges of the wings. Gosh, those bees are cracking me up. So maybe, maybe I'll uh, mark those hairs. Is there any other features you guys want to see up close? Let me know. Otherwise, we'll just sketch these little hairs and uh, maybe then we'll call it a good day. Um, where's my bug eye? Oh, there it is. Okay. So here's our bug eye up here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and sketch him over there with his little, his little, uh, hairy wings. Let's turn it this direction. Is it easy to see the hairs or is it quite difficult? It is quite difficult, isn't it? Cool, that'll work. So let's go ahead and give this little fella a little window over here where we're gonna draw. Up close. And we're gonna fill in some of these little hairs. It's just, um, these are cool little butterflies. Let's see, again, I'm gonna mess around with how we're looking at this little guy. 
Maybe it's because the brightness is too high. Let me fix that real quick, and then we'll we'll finish up the sketch and call it a day. Cause we wow, we've been going for an hour and twenty minutes. Hope you guys have um, been enjoying seeing these little guys. It's it's fun getting a chance to look up close at some of these animals that you catch like a little glimpse of, and then you you don't really get a chance to. Um, I don't know, to stop and look at because they flip by so quickly and they're so nervous that, you know, they disappear. They, they won't let you get very close to them. Okay, so, Buckeye, let's go. Little body. Oops, I drew that way too big. That's okay. We'll try to make this smaller. And you know what? Um, let me see the edge of this wing here. Hmm. Okay, and just hairs, hairs everywhere. I, I don't know why I took the time to like try and draw the segments in here. Honestly, what I might have done if, if I had one of my white gel, gel pens with me is just like made the body really dark and then drawn in these lighter hairs that are on the sides because that's really what's happening here, isn't it? Um, and it's so hard to distinguish like ballpoint pen scribbles over here from, from ballpoint pen hairs, <laughs> you know, um, but we're just doing our best here today. And the idea is just to get like the general feeling for what's happening. Um, and in this case, like we're just, we're just trying to show that it's very hairy, at least on the edges. Let's um, say hairy body and wings. Cool. So there's a little bit on our butterflies. Um, I do have more room on this page for additional uh, journaling entries, additional notes on these particular butterflies so that's kind of fun if I wanted to go back maybe if you have some space too you can go back and fill in some information about these butterflies um, like these little like, pixelated looking scaly wings and some other little features that you might be able to see up close um, oh gosh it's just so fun those wings are, are just amazing butterflies are so cool and uh, I hope you guys learned a little bit today because I certainly learned a few things about some of these butterflies that I had never noticed before just from taking the time to sit down, pay attention, and uh, get to know some of these features up close. Um, but that's that's all we're going to do today, guys. We've gone way over our time that we planned on going for this, so we're going to call it quits. But uh, I hope that you will continue to journal on your own. I'm going to go ahead and quickly hide this little microscope slide. so. Hopefully you've got some features there you can screenshot if you want to do them, do some more detailed stuff. Here's my finished journal page. Um, we've got our tire swallowtail with a question mark, that little spring azure, and I can't really, my tripod stands in the way, but um, the admiral and the dog-faced butterflies with some really great like zoom-in features that we were able to get with our microscope and just looking closely, including this little question mark mark that was on the bottom of the wing. So thank you guys for joining me. I'll p post a picture of this page in um, uh, the Nature Journal Club Facebook group. We do have a Facebook group if you wanna get on there and share your journal entries. Um, it, 
is uh, connected to our page, so you should be able to find it if you just look at it from our page. Um, but yeah, that's it. Okay, guys, thank you for coming along with me on this journey. I'll see you later. Have a great day.